As a result of his design, one of the compelling aspects of his classroom, I think, is the fact that he's rarely up in front of the class lecturing. Instead, he's usually walking around while students are at work, observing, cajoling, pressing others to tell him what they see or what they think. He's continuously interacting with his students and commanding in some way what he calls a three-ring circus, where all students are actively engaged in some form of work or inquiry. He does this, he says, by making sure there is always something clearly to do. So there isn't probably just one activity to do that day, but several different activities that are expected of students either in the course of that day or the entire week. This way, students are never in the position of basically hanging out with nothing to do or waiting for help from Mr. Muse, because there's always something to do. And if he gets tied up working with one group, there are others in the class that can chip in and help as well. When I'm in the room, I'm, I'm working with students the whole time. When students are busy, I'm, I'm working with them and helping them. And by doing that sort of rotating lab business, it turns out that you know, after a day, there are students who have gone through the, the lab. And if, if I'm too busy to answer questions, I can send a student over to talk to another student. Yeah, we did that yesterday. Here's, here's what you're not seeing, or here's how to do it. Yeah, here's the button to push. So you, you walk into my room during those times, and it does look like a three-ring circus or a free-for-all. And it certainly keeps me very busy, and I'm, I'm switching gears a lot. OK, so this all sounds well and good, but does it really work? That is the big question. Is it truly engaging for students? Do they feel like they are learning? And what is the evidence? Do you feel like you're learning as much or, if, or more by doing it this way? Probably more because you're actually doing it instead of just reading about it. And, you know, you don't get all the terms if you just sit at home and read a book. So, uh, you can ask questions as you work along through all the experiments. So. People say they don't, they don't believe things so they see it. And in the book, it'll, there'll be a problem like a man jumps in a cart and flies off a ledge and you know he drops in 2.5 seconds and you'll you'll have to believe it because that's what they tell you moose will actually put you in the cart and throw you off the ledge and see how long it takes and you'll and you'll believe it because you'll see it and that's i think that's moose's approach and that's what i mean you actually get to see the things that people book are talking about and you don't just wonder how they work or how they i mean you see it and you're hands on with it so i really think that's that's what moose is about like with the projects he actually assigns are more like being in touch with real world situations instead of book theory is, in my opinion, a lot more interesting and perhaps better. I mean, maybe not so much uh, theory based, more uh, like experience based. This happened again and again as I talked with the kids in Mr. Muse's class. They themselves continually made the point that his class was very different from most classes. Kids love working in the real world much more than trying to learn or memorize out of a book. The hands-on process of making, creating, and testing ideas through real-world projects and activities made a huge difference in their learning. If somebody's never been to this class, how would you describe it? <laughs> Interesting. Eventful. <laughs> yeah. It's hands-on. Yeah, yeah, very hands-on. It's, it's sort of helpful. like organized chaos. I mean, <laughs> he just gives us everything that needs to be done, done and then tells us when it's due, and then we have to go out and do it ourselves. And so it's nice, because it makes us work a little harder. <laughs> with the projects and stuff we're doing, especially with like the trebuchets and stuff, if you didn't know how to aim that thing, if you didn't know like where, like if what, what made it work, then you couldn't do it. We're going one step past what we do in a book. It's like we're learning how to do it, and then we're, you know, we're actually using it in everyday life, you know? So my next question is, why do it this way? What is Mr. Muse after anyway? If you talk to uh, university professors, uh, physics professors, and you ask them, what, what do you want kids walking in knowing about? And they'll never say anything about content. They'll get they'll get earfuls of that and, and truckloads of that in college. What they want is um, some ability to problem solve, to work cooperatively, to uh, tackle a problem and not get stuck. Oh, I couldn't find it in my textbook, so I stopped. 
uh, to be resourceful, to be curious and interested, and that's what's more important to me. It's also very, very important, I think, to um, tackle something in great depth. Um, because let's face it, if if any any student goes on to do something, it's going to be a thing that they do in great depth and become very expert at, we would hope. Um, and that's that's really what, what life fabric is about. It's not about knowing lots of little facts about a broad area. It's about being able to to find a passion about something and, and dig into it and peel the layers back and understand it more and more. To find your passion to want to go on in it, you need to find that one thing that turns you on. You film each scene with how many cameras? Two. The best things I do in, in class, there is a kind of magic. Taking a couple of lenses and turning that into a telescope that magnifies, there's magic there. Magic in the sense of delight, perhaps uh, delight in understanding, and, and making work some aspect of the of the of the physical world, bringing bringing the physical world into the hands and the control of students. When we build trebuchets, and then they actually work, and they actually throw tennis balls really far and hit targets. There's something extraordinary about that. In trebuchet construction, I would ask him. Well, how'd you feel the first time the, the thing threw the ball? I said, oh man, that was amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. Um, and uh, th those are things that really hook people. The best teachers are the ones who allow their kids to learn and get their kids excited about the material. If they can get their kids excited about the material, then I mean, there you go. By creating these opportunities for his students, I think Mr. Muse gave his students the chance to experience in a new way with their hands and minds what physics is all about. And through these products, I think they, perhaps even for the first time, began to gain a sense of science as a realm of wonder, play, and invention. Cool, fun, and worthwhile. Bruce is the man! <laughs>